Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. I'm gonna do things a little differently today. Apologies, I'm not really filling up the stream right now, but I do want to record something, so we're gonna look at Bido. I haven't really done it like this before, so we're just going to read about Bido's story. So, Bido is the leader of the Crux, an armed crew based in Leeway Harbor. An armed crew means exactly what it sounds like. A crew of sailors, armed to the teeth, and, uh, yeah, there you go. Without getting into too many details, everything the Crux does is approved by the Chixing, more or less. Bido is a trusted leader, so much so that her crew believes her capable of taming the storms and billows on the sea. It's Bido. Even the mightiest of storms must bow its head to her might. Absolutely true. So, Bido is something of a cultural icon in Liwei. Though her fame does not quite reach the same lofty heights as that of the Liwei Chixing, one can be certain that every merchant in the city knows her name and that of her crew, the Crux. Naturally, there are rumors abound regarding some of her status. People love to tell epic tales of her earth-shattering, or rather sea-splitting, feats. Tales in which her abilities are exaggerated to the utmost superhuman levels. One rumor is that she can channel electro energy within her sword. It is said that once she used it to cut a formidable sea monster from the depths of the ocean abyss in half with just one hit. Bystanders who overhear such tales generally dismiss them as drunken ramblings. But, to anyone who has ever voyaged with Bido themselves, these stories are no joke. In their view, if this world really were home to a giant sea monster from the ocean abyss, Bido would certainly be capable of cutting it in half. In summary, Bido's abilities are every bit as impressive as her reputation. In business circles, so if you hear her lauded as the uncrowned lord of the ocean, suffice to say that there is no smoke without fire. Dang, Bido, Bido's just... <whistles> Woo, okay. Business people tend to put profit before humanity. This is true pretty much IRL. This is just accepted as the way of the world. At most, it makes for some light verbal sparring at the dinner table. But things are different in Liyue, where everyone is involved in business. They reject the notion entirely, claiming that Liyue Harbor is a special place where humanity is sacred. Foreign merchants will retort that the only thing special about Liyue is that they've managed to commodify humanity too. To this, Liyue locals respond, then how do you explain the crux? With the crux having made a name for itself over many years, its services are extremely expensive to charter. And yet, on one voyage, when the Crux encountered a strong storm, Bido noticed a small private boat nearby. Seeing the way that was tossed about by the waves, she ordered her crew to tow the boat to safety, despite the risk that her ship's keel might give way. What little food and water the fleet had left, Bido shared with the rescued crew, as she navigated her vessel onward through the raging storm. Finally, several days later, the Crux delivered the rescued boat to a safe mooring spot. Grateful to Bido and for saving their lives, the crew of that rescued boat became loyal trade partners thereafter. Uh, lo Liyue locals recount this story, and they smile and insist, When you have someone risking their life like that, you can be sure that it takes far more commodification to explain their actions. Would you really dare to look at Bido in the eyes and talk about the commodification of humanity? I think not. Word has it that the Crux's boss, behind the curtains, is none other than the Chixing's Tianquan, or Tianchan, Ningguang herself. Both of, the, both of the people involved deny this outright, though they do so for different reasons. As a member of the Chixing, Ningguang often needs someone else to do her dirty work for her. Of the many candidates available, she picked Bido. Ningguang would emphasize that she picked Bido, not the Crux. Ningguang's collaboration with the Crux is therefore purely incidental. Meanwhile, when Bido hears the rumors about her dealings with Ningguang, she furiously insists that she collaborates with Ningguang on an equal footing. Bido is her own boss, and no, and no one, not even Ningguang, is sitting in the background pulling the strings for her. Bido is certainly unique among Ningguang's collaborators. She does not tread carefully, nor show reverence in any way that most of them do. 
In fact, one could even say that Baido sometimes is at odds with Ningguang. Ningguang's advisors worry constantly that Baido is too unpredictable and too much of a maverick, but Ningguang simply smiles and dismisses their concerns. On the contrary, Baido is the most reliable person in Liwei. Just tell her the truth, as well as what's in it for her, and she'll come around in her own time. So this is basically just talking about how uh, the relationship Baido and Ningguang have, which does run much deeper than this. Um, and I, I think there absolutely is like a connection. There is a reason, but they just deny it outright because they don't get punished if, if it is like that. But anyway, that's politics in this game. So, once after disembarking from a long voyage, the Crux held its customary three-day celebratory banquet. The autumn was like any other before it, except for the new chef in town. This was Zhongling, the head chef-to-be of the Wanmin restaurant. Looking to keep costs down, they lured Zhongling on board after meeting her on the streets by hook and by crook. When she saw Baido, Zhongling was dismayed and let Baido know this in no uncertain terms. If you want to have the U.S.-style seafood, then I can't agree to help you. I'll have you know that I intend to transcend Li Wei's two warring culinary styles with my cooking. Baido merely smiled and gestured to the chest of gold coins beside her. Just do what you're good at. We made quite a bit on our last run. How does a retainer of 50,000 mora sound? Not one to shy away from a chance to prove the worth of her cooking, Zhang Ling took the job. When the day was done, Baido was indeed won over by Zhang Ling's skill. She declared in front of her crew that Zhang Ling would soon be a renowned chef throughout Li Wei. She also insisted that they refer to her as Madame Zhang Ling. Having only begun to make her name, Zhang Ling admired Baido for her generosity with money and her direct personality. Thereafter, Zhang Ling would sail with Baido often, looking for new and exotic seafood ingredients. She found herself surprised by Vido's vast, vast knowledge of seafood and their culinary preparation, given how far she usually was from any kitchen. Of course, that didn't mean that Zhang Ling would necessarily heed Vido's advice on whether something was edible or not, but that's a different story, because we all know that Zhang Ling likes to make slimes incorporated into her food. And as much as I like the grease... I don't really like the Geo Slime. It's too earthy for me. But yeah, so I didn't actually know that at all. That's actually really interesting um, that that happened. So that means that Baido and Zhongling are a lot closer than I originally thought. So yeah. Some say an object takes after its master. Though it may not be a suitable description, the Crux crew does indeed take after Baido, exhibiting the same qualities. However, there are still some secrets among the crew spreading in places unnoticed by Baido. Her first mate always takes new sailors out after their first safe return for drinks and fills them in on the details of an old story. In the past, the crew went on a journey to brave the unknown seas and found itself at death's door in a horrific storm. At that time, Baido stood on the deck behind the wheel singing a Liyue fisherman's song in the storm. All the way until the waves died down and the dawn broke on the far horizon, the first mate often ends the story with this final line and a look of longing on his face. As business grew and the crew expanded, more and more outrageously incredible details were added to the story, making the rookies worship Baido like the goddess she is. So yeah, there you go. We actually get a little bit of gossip about Baido as well. Facing a three-headed hydra of unrivaled girth, Baido hurled forth her greatsword. Spinning in the air, it sliced clean through three of the hydra's vertebrae before returning to her waiting hand. Baido was beaten Ning Wong at chess twice. The important part is not so much that she did win Ning Wong's money, but more that she dared to. Since the day she slew the sea monster Haishan, Baido has never sung a fisherman's shanty again. Yes, Baido knows shanties, but don't you dare ask her that to her face. I mean, you know how that hydra ended up, don't you? Oh, okay, so that goes in with uh, this story about the sea shanty. 
And the first one with people saying um, the rumors about, or maybe it was this one. Whatever it was. Basically, it, it goes, it ties in with people saying that Bido has slain a sea monster. Like, it, so she used to sing sea shanties. Excuse me. She used to sing she she used to sing sea shanties. Um, yeah, try saying that as fast as you can over and over. That's that's not gonna work. Um, but yeah, no. So so she used to sing some shanties, but she doesn't anymore. And that was after she slayed a hydra. So now if she does it. She's going to kill something, pretty much. And that's just what we know. So we do get a rumor that Baido is quite intelligent, much much more so than Ningguang. So that's actually really cool. I like that. I like that. So this is how Baido received her vision. It's actually very long. Liwei and Inazuma share a common saying. Its fins form the ocean deep, its tail the mountains high. The fishermen learned this phrase while ashore long ago and sang it over and over spreading the tune far and wide until it became much loved by people today. Whenever the mists gather over the sea's surface, one can hear the distant song of fishermen hidden in the shroud. Its fins form the ocean's deep, its tails the mountain high. This was Bido's childhood lullaby. The tale of Rex Lapis smiting the sea monsters had become legendary among the people of Liwe. As a child, Bido loved tales like this, and in her dreams, she thought, one day, I want to see this big fish. This day, however, she sang this song with a different emotion in her heart. Her entire crew sang along as they sailed. Haishan was in the waters with them. At once, like a dragon and a fish, it was larger than any could have imagined in their worst nightmares. And mighty is a deity, raising waves dozens of meters high with ease. All who ply their trade on the high seas are destined to meet with Haishan eventually. Baido had longed to do so since she was nine, dreaming of slicing its head off with a single blow. Many times she had challenged the creature, and many times she had failed. But this day was different. This day she charged at Haishan with her best great sword in hand, and cracked sailors at her back. The battle would raise fiercely for four days. With cannons and harpoons, arrows and ropes, the fleet would assail Haishan, while Baido battled thusly the the Battled the thusly tied down creature for ten hours. Good God, Bido is strong. So this is well into the night. She is still fighting this massive sea monster. Now that it was nighttime, Haishan was in its element. And in its vigilance, in their vigilance, not a single member of the fleet dared to sleep. Bido stood upon the prow, listening to the wind. One strike. Just one strike. That was all she needed. And so she waited, unmoving in the freezing wind. At the crack of dawn, having neither eaten nor drank through the night, Bido heard a change in the sound of the waves. With one almighty strike that sounded as if it could have ripped the moon in two or ripped a mountain off the face of the world, she chopped the leviathan's head clean off. The sound of thunder filled the heavens, and a single bolt of purple lightning struck the ocean right in front of Baido. Even as she bathed in the blood of her nemesis, thus descended a vision to the slayer of the sea monster, its violet glow as stunning as lightning, and its immaculate jeweled form, a treasure more precious than dragon blood, a suitably divine gift for the hero who subdued Haishan. So Baido essentially got her vision because she's that strong. That's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. We're going to go over a lot of the voice lines too because I have uh, quite a lot of them. Or actually, I have all of them. I don't know why I'm saying quite a lot of them. I'm Beto. You've heard Beto. my ship, the Crux, and its crew. If you too love adventure, then join me. I've got your back. Beto? I've been saying Bido for three years. 
You're kidding me, right? If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Ah, oh, I love seeing that. That's one of the idle one. Ah, <sighs> cold beer after a hard day's work. Nothing like it. She's right about that. It's hard to remain on dry land for so long. You never seem to quite get my land legs back. See, I don't know anything about that. I'm sure there are people that, are, that might be watching who boat regularly. I don't know exactly what that feeling's like, but I've heard, like, you know, of, you know, seagoers saying stuff like that. And, and I just, I don't really know. I'm going to guess it's because water isn't like the surface of the ground because... When you're on a boat, I know that it's it's constantly moving up and down. If you didn't know, water actually does not move from side to side. The physical properties of water actually means it only moves vertically. Uh, it cannot move horizontally. So the image that we, what we see with our eyes, what we're perceiving is water moving from side to side. But what's actually happening is water is shifting up in a way, but the liquid is moving this way as it does it so like when you tilt a glass like this and the water moves to the side technically this part of the water is moving up but this part is moving down and that's why it seems to go from side to side it's something equivalent of that but i know it has something to do probably with that property of water anyway when stuck on a deserted island rain is a precious source of drinking water there's no need for it now though <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's gonna be something if I ever get stranded, I'm gonna remember that. Just stick my head up like a turkey. Hey, it's just a little lightning. No need to fear it on the open ocean, so there's even less need to fear it on dry land. I don't know about all that. No, I don't know about all that. Lightning hits the mast of your boat and you're screwed. But yeah, there's no real need to fear it. This weather would be great for setting sail. When it's windy. I've never had, like, really windy weather, so I've never actually heard her say that. That's cool. Wind's picking up. If sand gets in your eyes, be sure not to rub them. Oh my god. That's, uh, that's some life advice. If you go to the beach, and it's windy, and you get sand in your eyes, do not rub your eyes. You will never get that sand out. What you, the best thing to do, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> but don't rub your eyes. Yo, good morning. I'm about to head off. Coming with me? Let's get Shang Ling to whip us up something for lunch. Believe me, a hot meal from her is far better than the salted fish we eat out at sea. Dang. So yeah, no, that, they're actually pretty close to Shang Ling. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm off for a drink. <laughs> no one willing to sell you a proper drink, huh? Well, perhaps I can. She's literally like the Blackbeard of this game, except she's actually a good person because she doesn't, you know, pillage. Time moves quickly. <laughs> Go. May the wind be at your back. We're setting sail. Men, to your posts. A new adventure is about to begin. I really like her voice actor. I really like her voice actor. She did a great job. I, I, I really do feel Bido's emotion with it. It's great. I'm the captain, so you can be my first mate, deal? Yes. <laughs> Such names are too outdated for you, huh? We'll call each other whatever you wish, then. Oh! Alright, then. Pretty straightforward. Pretty forward there, eh? I tend to be a good judge of character. When you've learned to read the open ocean, reading people is a cinch. <laughs> and that's how I knew you're the good sort the second I laid eyes on you. Oh! Well then, that's pretty cool. I like her personality, like, we get a lot about this. I chose you as my crewmate, as my comrade on the sea. It gives me great pride to be able to say that. Wow. To those that don't have a vision, it must seem that those with visions are like flagships from the Archons to follow. As such, I make sure to fly my flag with pride. That is my motivation. Wow. So basically the vision just said, oh, you're already strong? Huh, <laughs> here's a, how about you get way stronger? At a loss, when you don't know what to do, just take the first step. The rest will figure itself out naturally. Wow. Every time I return from a long journey and I see the lapis glades, I'm reminded that I'm almost home. The scenery out on the open ocean gets familiar real quick. Sure, they're birds of prey, but... Seeing them fly so freely is 
heartwarming. That's really interesting. She's got she's a very interesting character, in all honesty. Nenguang, eh? As far as Liu Qixing is concerned, she seems to be doing a good job. But for me, my responsibility lies with my ship and my men, and not with Liu Qixing. All right. Ningguang has never really went to speak frankly, but she has been very direct with her criticism of me in the past. <laughs> but hey, whether she likes me or hates me is her choice. Nothing I can do to sway her. I'm pretty sure she likes you and hates you at the same time. Like, uh, y'all have a love-hate relationship. There is no denying that. <sighs> when we're out on the open ocean, the one thing we do all miss is Zhang Ling's cooking. When spirits are low, just thinking of her fried yuyun chili bursting with flavor. It gives everyone just that little extra kick. And stomach ulcers. Zhang Ling, huh? Well, she sometimes uses some interesting ingredients in her dishes to bring about some uh, intriguing flavors. Though, uh, there's no way she can improve without having someone to taste test. A role that I am more than happy to fill. So you're basically saying you'll eat the greasy slime stuff. Interesting. Oh my god, there's a, I'm not going through all these yet. I have a locked one? Why are you lo- oh. Oh. Well, I have to complete a quest. I, I almost had- I'll go through the rest of them later, my god. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. But yeah, yeah, that's- pretty much uh, what I was going to do with that. I'm probably going to make a lot more of these because I'm going on vacation soon. Sorry that there's not a stream today. I wanted to make some Pokemon videos. I got a little stuff that I want to do. Hang out with my friends and such. Also, Tears of the Kingdom. Also, also, Ratchet, of the Clank is coming, Ratchet and Clank is coming to the PC and I'm very excited for that because I really want to play that. I haven't played a Ratchet and Clank game in years. Years, because I haven't had a PlayStation to do it on. You don't understand how excited I am for that. I love it. Whatever, you know what? Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this one. And we're going to see all of you in the next video that we do. Take care, everybody.